Well, guys, happy day. So glad you're with us for another episode of Snap Political. Welcome to the channel, guys. And before we dive in, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it, comment, and let's keep engaging in the comment section. So grateful for you. And I got to shout out one of my, um, I think he's a subscriber. I think it's Alabama, something like that. He gave me a little tip about my glasses. So I got on some different ones. <laughs> yeah, me cracking up y'all in the comment section. So got some different glasses on. Hope you like them this time, guys. Let's dive right on in. So you know we've been on this political big, this big thing heavy, and you know who I want to be out of office. It looks like Joe Biden will not be president by the end of the calendar year. So the question is, who gonna take his spot though? Who is gonna take his spot? Let's see. The race for 2024 is heating up. A brand new poll showing Donald Trump still dominating the GOP that. field as the top 60%. choice for nearly 60% of Republican voters. Fox News contributor and our friend, former oh, GOP wow. Congressman Maybe Jason so. Chaffetz, joins us now. So let's take a look at this poll. Welcome, Jason. Uh, let's take a look at this poll. What do you make of this? I mean, they keep, we've got four indictments and a mugshot and the numbers keep growing. What does it tell you? Yeah, because they see the, how crooked this government is. That's why the numbers keep growing. And look, so DeSantis has always been second to Trump, but Haley is actually third. I thought she was a little further down. Ramaswamy was number three, but now he's dropped down. Let's look at this. You about the Republican voter and what does it show you about what's going to happen in the general? I think the Democrats have way overstepped 91 indictments against the former president of the United States. I think most people see that as excessive, non, not necessary. Um, and it bolsters up Donald Trump and it, it creates all kinds of problems for all the rest of the people in the field. They can't get the oxygen to actually go out there and make the case. And Donald Trump's numbers get stronger and stronger. But if you're one of those competitors, particularly Governor Ron DeSantis, I think you got to be able to say, hey, look, you can't win in the general election, Mr. President. That's his case to be made. And if you look at the state by state polls like Georgia and Iowa and Wisconsin, some key vital states, he's going to say, I do better than you do in a general election against Joe Biden. Now, whether or not ultimately every voter buys into that, but that's his story. So what is in the mindset? I, think, I mean, you, you I think DeSantis needs to just, just jump on board, but I don't want to see him as president in this um, election. I don't. I want him to kind of get his strategy better. You know, I was disappointed with him when it came to his question responses, his lack of vision for me for the country um, during the GOP debate. So I really feel like give yourself a little bit more time to continue to marinate, get your skills up, you know, get some things in order, get a real campaign going, you know, supportive wise. And let's see where you are in four years. You touch and talk to a lot of people out there yeah. and travel a lot. Um, you're a former congressman, of course. What is going on in the minds of, if you're a Democrat trying to understand, why would Republicans vote more for Donald Trump after an indictment and after a mugshot that I think they thought was going to be a fatal blow to Donald Trump's campaign? What's in the mindset of the Republican voter that, they, that, that more of them are flocking to Trump? Because they recognize that you have a Department of Justice that has been weaponized. It's an unequal application of justice. The way they treat Hunter Biden, the Bidens, Hillary Clinton, you name it, on the Democratic side of the aisle, they treat it so differently than That's they do right. Donald Trump, for That's goodness right. sake. I mean, it's it just case after case. So they've emboldened Donald Trump. They don't understand why, you know, don't even begin to understand what Republicans feel about just application of law, liberty, you know, right, so you think self determination. It's, it's the, the and they like the way when Donald Trump was president, energy prices were low, yeah. the economy was good, mm -hmm. the world was safer. They people like that. Yeah. And they they didn't forget about it conveniently two and a half years after it happened. Do you right. think it is for many of those voters existential well, so where true. they think if Donald Trump if they could do this to him, they're coming after that there's a two tier yeah. system of justice that that I'm going to be you know, I'm a dis I'm going to feel like a dissident in my own country or I do feel like one. Yeah, they think they're coming after their their liberty. They're they're coming after their way of life. They're going after moms, for goodness sake. The Department of Justice targeting mothers and people that care about their kids at school. And, and the American people feel that. And what's also interesting about this poll, the poll over overwhelmingly said the majority of people don't want Joe Biden or Donald Trump to, to run. But they are the two that? leaders. I, I I can't, I 
can't explain. <laughs> I mean, it's not explain it all, right? We know why they don't want Biden to run. Come on, let's be real. Trump, I don't know. I don't know that. I feel like age may could be a, a, um, a why people may be saying that. But let's just state and deal with the facts. The man is in great condition and tip top shape. He is doing, he's touring like he an artist, like a music artist. One time, one state, one day he's in this state. Two days later, he in this state. Next day, you know, he playing golf. I mean, come on. The man is in very great condition. And it's just four years, people. Come on. You can't even compare him to uh, Janky Joe. I'm sorry. But it is interesting. I, I think on the case of what Joe Biden, is he is too old. His cognitive capabilities well, have diminished. He is and there's just a set of people that just will, will never he Will he be the uh, old Oh, candidate? I don't think so. Who will I, that be? I, I, I don't know, but I think by the end of the calendar year, I've said for a long time, the end of the calendar year, I don't think Joe Biden's the president. He has, you know, he has less than 10 campaign staffers on Joe Biden for president. He's not exactly working hard, and he's not even going to the swing states that are really important. He took a trip out west. He came to Utah. We love having him in Utah, but you know what? He didn't go to Montana. He didn't go to Nevada. Yeah, he didn't that's go to Colorado. So and only 10 staffers. That does say a lot about... Yeah. You may be right. I think he's going through the motions. I think the man is going through the motions. He knows good and where there is no competition. Please, people don't want to see him back in office. They know that they're crooked. People don't, the Democrats don't want him back in office. But who is going to be the front runner? Who, who, who is a mystery? You may be right. We so. may have a vice, we may have a President Kamala before no. the end of the term. No. I think no. I think you just broke some news on that. No, let's not do that. I'm not that crazy. <laughs> All right, so uh, we have Sunday Morning Futures. You're hosting. You, it's always a great lineup on that show. So what do you have this weekend? Well, look, uh, I, I, duck and cover, America. Congress goes back into session this mm -hmm. week. So we have Senator Marsha Blackburn. Uh, we got Mike Gallagher, who's the chairman of the uh, looking at China and everything that's going on in there. Claudia Tenney uh, that's coming on and the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Jason Smith, uh, Hunter Biden, the Biden investigations, what's going on with China and then the appropriations. How are we going to actually fund the government by, government by the end of the month? Big show. Love the guests. It's going to be oh, good. And a great host. So make Thank sure you, you tune in right after the show. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Jason. Okay, so there you have it. He said, oh no, no, not Kamala. Okay, and we, many of us feel the same way. I just don't think she's strong enough to be able to run our country. So who would be the person to step up? That is the question. That is the question. Because we already know that he's not running it right now. But I'm really curious to see who is going to be the Democratic front runner. So many are saying that they think Michelle Obama is going to slide in there. And I just, I hope not. But even if so, with everything that's going on, plus the situation with the chef, mm, I still am, you know, feel like even if she did, she doesn't have the support of, of black people like she they used to. I'm sorry. A lot of black people are seeing what's going on. And I hope other people in our country as well i hope other people in our country uh, as well of all ethnic groups not just black people but i speak to black people because that's my nationality and we have been not supportive of trump for a, a while and i know i was that person at first too and then i started doing my own homework and research and things shifted and facts and facts many many black people are thinking the same thing so let's be smart people let's be smart and keep doing our research and paying attention Appreciate you guys for coming over. Put in the comment section who you think may be the Democratic runner and who's going to replace um, Janky Joe at the end of the year if he no longer in president. Come on, who? Who do y'all think? Subscribe, like it. I appreciate all your support. Keep coming back, guys, and I'll see you on the next episode of Snap Political.